they made fortunes doing it, too. Although on how to start an airline, C4, the advice for would-be airline moguls was rather staid and sober. This entertaining documentary followed the upward surges and downward spirals, not to mention heavy turbulence of one man's bid to beat the big boys of the airline business. Kazi Rahman was a softly spoken East End lad with sharp suits, in a steel and jumbo size plans. Having started out cleaning loose at City Airport, then opened a chain of perfume shops, he was now looking to the skies. He and fellow plane lover Abdul Rohab were working with aviation consultant John Brayford to break into the market with a Muslim-friendly airline. It got cloudy pretty quickly as Kazi tried to work out whether that meant halal food and booze-free flights, or flying to places Muslims found it difficult to reach. In the meantime, he'd spent the past few years raising funds for this rather unclear airline idea among family, friends and the wider British Bangladeshi community. Shaking his head on the sidelines, John Brayford encouraged Kazi to stop trying to fly before he could flap his wings and suggested starting with short haul. It's true that Kazi's alleged offer of shares to the CEO of a small Irish airport might have sounded iffy. It's also true that his meeting in the Biggles Bar at Lid London Ashford may have unraveled when he asked the airport boss for money, instead of offering it. At the same time, we wondered if that was really the obstacle. Brayford kept telling him this was a serious, highly regulated business, one in which Kazi couldn't act like a master perfume flogger down the market. Maybe he was right, but if he was then how did all those other chances and Barrow boys get their breaks in the budget? Fly game? Maybe they didn't have bushy beards and Bangladeshi names. At any rate, a few failed takeoffs didn't discourage the former airport cleaner. When we left him he had a plane and a pilot, and if they didn't quite make an airline, you sure can't start one without them, blank. Before Grenfell, A Hidden History, BBC Two, was a documentary in the true sense of the word, recording and preserving something that might otherwise get forgotten. Before the tower burnt down a year ago, there were other stories, stretching back centuries. A community came to live in the tower and on the surrounding North Kensington estate. Despite the cliches and the assumptions, many who took flats there were proud to, and felt very fortunate. It was only in the 80s, when the Right to Buy scheme launched the idea that public housing was something to be ashamed of, or a state to be escaped from, that things deteriorated. Unsurprisingly, the fabric of the estate and its buildings fell into decline about the same time. It would be wrong to blame one era, though. From the wall built in 1843 to divide the areas rich from the poor, to the race riots and rack renting of the 50s, few places have been so full of tensions for so long.